I was originally scheduled to give this talk at a live event being hosted by the City of Waterloo in Ontario. But because of COVID-19, it got cancelled and instead we decided to do a live online event. This is a recording of that event. I hope you enjoy it. Hi everybody. It's nice not to see you. <laughs> uh, it's a little strange sitting here talking to you and not see anybody. But I know you're all there. I've got a free book for you. If you go to GardenFundamentals.com and go to the books menu, you can download this book for free. It's a PDF book, so you don't need a reader. It's called 24 and a Half Garden Design Ideas. And what I do in this book is I walk around the neighborhood and I pick sort of two areas. One is a new neighborhood and the other one is an old neighborhood so that I kind of cover a wide range of properties. And I critique people's front yards. I literally stand in front of their house and take pictures and critique it. And I try to figure out what is it about this design that's good, what is bad about it. And I go through a number of these in the book and I also show you how to do this yourself. Now that you're home a lot and you're trying to get outside and do some walking, it's a great exercise. And you learn a whole lot by looking at other people's gardens. Because I think we can be more critical looking at other people's gardens than our, our own and we can see mistakes easier and we can see things we really like and maybe we'll bring those back to our own homes. The one time I was walking around the neighborhood and someone called the police on me and the police showed up and wondered why I was taking pictures of people's front yards. So you have to be a little careful. But it's perfectly legal as long as you stay on the sidewalk. Alright, so what makes a garden special? About 15 years ago, I was shopping around for a new house and a new garden. I was going to get a big garden. And so I collected all kinds of pictures of all the gardens that I thought were great. I went through magazines and online and books. And anytime I'd seen something really special, I took a picture of it. Once I had this big pile of material, I sat down and asked myself, why do I think this particular picture is that special? Like, why did I take it over all the others? And the answer I came to was that every time I see a really special garden, it has something unique in it, something that you don't find everywhere. And I think a lot of times we make a mistake by making our gardens look like other people's gardens. And if you do that, they're just not special. Let me show you a couple pictures. So this is my garden. Uh, it's obviously fall. I mean, it looks pretty. It's nothing unusual there. But it's nothing special. I mean, you can go online and see a million pictures like this. There's nothing to really attract you to this garden. But there's also nothing special in the picture. These are nice plants, but they're not that spectacular. Here's another picture of my garden. Again, the plants aren't anything spectacular. But now we have this white pathway going through it, lined with these nice limestone rocks. And that is enough to make a garden much more interesting than the previous picture. Now on the left side there you have a tall miscanthus grass which is spectacular in the fall so it does add something to that part of the garden. Structures in the garden I think are really important. So here's a couple arbors that I have. They add height to the garden. They add a different look than just plants. Again the key is something special. Here's a little statue I bought a few years ago. It's supposed to be Mother Nature. I kind of think the face looks very manly, but I didn't make the, the statue. Now, interestingly, it, it sits in this part of the garden because it actually hides my wellhead, which is kind of ugly, and now it looks kind of nice. If you look in this garden and you kind of glance through it, your eye immediately goes to it, and that's what makes this bed special. It can be a piece of art. And it could be very simple things. It doesn't have to be an unusual piece of art or painting or something like that. Here's a little garden on the side of a walkway. But rather than put the rock in the bed, which everybody does, this rock is sitting half in the bed and half in the walkway. It's actually sticking out. And the two bushes beside it have been clipped to look kind of roundish, just like another rock. So with some very common evergreens and a rock that's kind of pretty, but it's, you know, it's not super special, you suddenly have something very interesting that you won't find in a lot of gardens. And that makes this little spot special. And then you can always put something really interesting in there. 
One thing about a garden is that it doesn't have to be serious. Now, if I'm decorating my house, I'm going to be a little more careful with colors and design and so on. I mean, I want it to look like a nice house. But in my garden, I can go crazy and put in whatever I want. Here's a good example. Lots of us have sheds. And everybody gets a shed that looks pretty much like this. Why do we do that? Why don't you get a shed that looks like this? Now you've got a really special shed and a special garden. Now this one came off the internet, but this one is very similar design and this one is in Mississauga in a very, very small backyard. In fact, the shed takes up a third of this backyard. This couple just loves this kind of design. It has a drawbridge that works, it has a little moat, it's got a little chair inside. It makes this garden so spectacular. And colors. The garden is a place where you can use lots of weird colors. Make them bright. Too many times we see things like benches and so on that are brown. Okay, let's paint them up. Let's use color. Always looks good in a garden. Here's something I did in my garden a couple years ago. I have this fern gully. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be kind of neat if I had life running around in? So I went out and got myself a dozen pink flamingos. And they live in there. And this time of year, of course, the ferns aren't up yet, so they're kind of sticking out. But once the ferns grow, it mostly hides them. And now it becomes a surprise when someone's looking at the garden. Now, to be honest, not everyone likes this. My wife actually hates it. But I think it's a fun little thing to do. In fact, my goal this summer is to find some small ones, and I want to make a little nest and have a couple babies in there with mom and dad standing around them. Let's have some fun in the garden and make it interesting. All right, focal points. Of all the design ideas, I think focal points are probably the most important. Focal points are a way to draw the eye where you want it to go. So if you think about standing in the middle of a garden, where do you want your visitor to look? That's where you put a focal point. Let's have a look at some of these. So this is my backyard. There's a pathway that runs up this way, comes up here, crosses the bridge comes down the other side and comes out down here. And then I had an open house and all of the people came to this point right here and just stood there and looked up at the hill. Almost nobody went up the hill and yet the path is pretty clear here. It was a bit of a surprise to me. The following year I had another open house, the same hill, but I made one change. Keep your eye on this part of the hill. I did this. I put up a bench. Everybody came to the bottom here, seen the bench, and went up the hill. Everybody went and sat down on that bench and sat there enjoying the garden until the next group came up and then they felt obligated to get off the bench and come down and then the other group sat up there. That bench made such a huge difference in this garden. Now this focal point isn't that special to look at, but you do see it from most of my garden. But the bench is enough to draw the people up. All right, so that was a success, sort of. The problem with this bench is it looks completely out of place. And I'm going to talk a little bit about scale later on in the program, but the bench is out of scale. It's too small for a pretty big hill. This tree over here, by the way, is a 200-year-old sugar maple. It's a pretty big tree. And that gives you an idea how dinky the bench is. So I had to put something up there to draw people up. I needed a focal point up there, but the bench wasn't doing it. So this is what I have now. I built myself a little Japanese tea house, and there's a surprise up there which I won't tell you about. But almost everyone that comes to the garden will go up that hill to see the tea house. So it draws people in there. You see it from the front of the property, and it becomes the major focal point of the garden. There's the view from the top of the hill. Well, let's have a look at this garden. So it's a pretty average looking garden. A little lawn, some nice red flowers. But what if we put a focal point in this garden? How does that change it? it? Makes a huge difference. Now we have something at the end of the garden that not only draws people's eye, but you also have a destination. It's inviting. If you come to this one, you'll probably just stand and look at it. But if you come to this one, you will probably go over and sit down and enjoy the garden. And so that's great use of a focal point in a very, very small garden. We're back to my garden. This is my 40-foot arbor. And I decided that at the end of the arbor, I needed something really special. And I actually bought this piece of stone. 
Uh, I don't like buying stone because I have lots of my own, but this is a particular nice piece of a granite. You see it at the end of this tunnel, and everybody goes to the end, and they go over and they touch this stone. In fact, I haven't planted around the front of it because everybody wants to go right up and touch it. Now, in the middle of summer, this looks a little more interesting, and the focal point becomes less important because it's full of clematis. And so you get this beautiful view as you walk down to the end. The Curia Park is in Mississauga, and as far as I know, this is the only Japanese garden in Ontario. If I'm wrong, let me know, because I, I love Japanese-style garden. But this one's accessible, it's open, it's free, and this is part of the garden. What do we see here? Well, I mean, it's okay. If you look in the background, you can see the high-rises from Mississauga, and they're hidden pretty well by some pretty standard evergreens. The water's quite nice. There's nothing really special about this picture until we put in a focal point. And this focal point does a couple things. Again, it draws our eye over there, but it also tells us that this is a Japanese garden. And so that one piece of artwork there is defining the style of this garden. So how do you place a focal point? Where should it go in the garden? Well, here's another focal point. It's a bridge, but it's been painted white so it sticks out. So ask yourself, where do you want people's eye to go? And the other secret thing is that a lot of times the feet follow the eyes. So if I'm looking at something, there's a good chance I'm going to go over there. If you see this in someone's backyard, I mean, I don't know if you can help yourself, but you've got to go over and find that bridge and see where it goes. This focal point is very obvious. We have a nice walkway here. And they put it at the end of the walkway. So, of course, you're going to walk towards it. Not only that, but it's sitting right on the, the walkway there. So, you can go right up to it and touch it. So, it's drawing the person through the garden. Here's a very traditional garden, a very traditional focal points. So, we're standing where the camera is. And we see the first focal point, And it draws us in and we walk towards it. When we get here, we see the next one, which is down here. And we walk there. When we get there, there's another one. It's a bench. So you can use your focal points to move your guests through the garden. They walk up to the first one. When they get there, where do you want them to go next? Do you want them to go straight, left, right? Put a focal point wherever you want them to go. Now, focal points aren't always something you have to go to. This is one of my pieces of artwork, and I put it right in the middle of a bed, and it's very clear when you see the bed itself that you can't walk towards it. I've, I've just raised the camera up so you don't see all the shrubbery in front of it. This is a do not touch statue. But again, it's a focal point. So you're walking along the garden, and suddenly you see this out of the corner of your eye. It's kind of hidden a bit between the shrubs, and this thing just kind of sticks out. Something else that I think is very important is elevations. People with flat gardens, you want hills. People with hills want flat gardens because hills are kind of a pain to work on. But if you can get a garden with some elevations, take it. If you don't have elevations, put some in because it adds so much more interest. Here's a fairly simple garden. It's a nice pergola, nice chairs. You can see that there's a step up to get into it, so that's one set of elevations. And over here on the far right, there's three steps down. So the far right corner is a lower elevation area. By adding these slight differences, and we're only talking, you know, six inches difference, we make the whole garden so much more interesting. So if you have a flat garden, and I know most people have, find some way to raise it up. Here's one possibility. Make a raised bed at the back. Now, I suspect this was probably done the opposite way, that they had this raised bed and they actually dug it out to put in the patio. But that elevation adds a whole lot of interest to this garden. In garden design, there's something called views. Here's a fantastic view. So you're inside the house. What do you see when you look out your window? Many of us go out into the garden and then start our design process standing in the garden. But the reality is that we spend most of the time in the house. All winter long, we're in the house looking out. Even in the summertime, when the bugs are too bad, we sit inside the house and look out. So the place to start your garden design is inside the house. Go to all the windows, look out, try and decide what you want to see. You want to see nice things from your main windows, and 
this is a perfect example. So this is my house. So we have some fairly big windows at the back. Uh, by the way, when I moved into this house, there were no gardens whatsoever. All you did was look out here on lawn. So we got rid of the lawn pretty quick. So on the left here, we've got the tea house. Down the middle here, we've got a long waterfall with several ponds coming down to a final pond at the bottom. And both of those have been designed to be very visible from inside the house. Because we spent a lot of time in this room. This is our TV room. And then we've got these cute little chairs. The nice thing about the chairs is, and we actually picked the chairs for this reason too, is they don't hide the view of the garden. You see right past them. Whereas if we got normal chairs here, they, the backs would be much higher and, and they would hide the view. Now views can be very simple. So here we have a hedge. It could be just shrubs. It could be a cedar hedge. Cut a little hole into it. Make a little viewing window so that you see something on the other side. Here's a little archway. Now it would be very easy to have this archway and just leave the lawn on the other side and it would be okay but it would be awfully boring. By putting a bench there with some flowers we suddenly have something that's really interesting and as the person is walking along and they see this opening in the hedge they look through and here's this beautiful view. Here's another one. So you're walking along the pathway and you suddenly have this view. We have this vase sitting in the middle You've got a tree on the left side, which kind of frames it. You've got another pot and grass on the right side, so you've got another frame there, and you have this picture in the middle. So what you want to do is walk around your garden and stop at places you think your visitors will stop and look around. Do you have a nice view? If not, maybe you should create one there. So here's a very simple garden. That bench really draws me into it. I mean, I think most people are going to walk over to that bench and sit down, especially with the flowers behind there. Now the question is, once I'm there and I'm looking back this way to the camera, what am I going to see? There's no point putting a bench somewhere and not giving the person a view once they sit onto that bench. So benches and chairs should be placed so that you always have something interesting to look at. Here's a concept that comes from Japanese gardens. Very nice looking garden, but if you look really closely right here, you actually see the fence. The back of this property is right here. And yet, this garden looks huge. We have this big evergreen back here, another nice bush here, and this is called a borrowed view. What is in the neighbor's yard that you can use to enhance your picture? Sometimes there's some nice stuff there maybe a fruit tree, maybe a nice maple tree. And sometimes that is ugly and you don't want to borrow. So have a look past your property and decide which of these views past the property do you want to keep and which do you want to hide. A lot of people just plant stuff and then they realize, hey, I just put a big tree in front of the nicest borrowed view of my yard. Now let's talk about scale. Scale is really hard to define and I haven't really come up with a good definition. But when the scale is right, you will know it. It just looks right. When it's wrong, you'll also know it because it just looks wrong. So let me give you a couple examples. So again, this is my garden. I wanted to build this little bridge over a dry riverbed and I had to figure out, you know, how big do I make the bridge to make it look like it fits in this garden? How much curvature do I make on there? To be quite honest with you, I just guessed, and it came out really good. The size is right for this size of bed. The curvature is interesting. The only problem with it is that when you walk on it, if you're coming down the other side, it's almost too steep and you feel like you're going to fall off. So although aesthetically it looks really great, uh, functionally it's, it's not the safest bridge to walk on. Now right behind the bridge is this tall grass here tall miscanthus. And by the end of the summer, this thing is a seven feet tall. And if you look around it, all the other plants are much smaller. And this thing's huge. And you could make the argument that it's actually out of place. The bed is too small for a plant that is that large. The reason it's still there is that miscanthus are warm growing grasses. So they don't start growing until June, July. So for most of the year, it's not that big. It only gets this big late in the summer. And I just think it's fantastic when it's that big. 
So I put up with it, even though it's not really in scale to the rest of the garden. Here's an arbor I built. Once it was done, I knew I'd done it wrong. And that's really how I figure out scale. I usually do it wrong a couple times. The vertical posts are four by fours, and the pieces across the top are two by fours, and they're just too small for this size of arbor. I should have went with six by six posts and two by six tops, a little more wood, a little heftier, and in this space, it would have looked so much better. This is another arbor at the other end of the garden, and here I did use bigger wood, and it looks so much better. It just seems to fit the space, and that's how you know scale. Fences. Everybody loves to have a fence around their property, and I get that, but why do we have to have them so ugly? I mean, this is just terrible looking. Very functional, very cheap, easy to install, at least for the builders, but it's ugly. This isn't a whole lot better. And I see so many gardens where you see these fences. All the gardens on the same street have the same fence. Remember, you want your garden to stand out and look special. Well, if you all have the same fence, you're not going to get to a special point. So here's a garden. It looks a whole lot better with stuff growing in front of it. The problem here is that a lot of these plants in here are grasses. At least the taller ones are at the back. And as I said, warm growing grasses don't really grow until late in the summer. So for a good part of the year and all winter long, you're going to look at the fence. So although this is an okay solution, it's really not the best solution. How about this? Stick this in the middle of your fence. Now you've got something interesting. You've got something the neighbors will talk about and you have a special garden. This is a nice fence too. It has a couple things going for itself. One is it's painted blue. So we've got more color. But it also has lots of plants that kind of hide the fence. And you can use these outdoor, or sorry, these potted plants, or you can use shrubbery. There's lots of ways to hide fences. Here's a chain link fence, easy to hide. You want something funky in your garden? Make the fence more interesting. Cover it up with nice flowers. Here you hardly notice that this is an ugly fence because you've got such a nice plant in front of it. False perspective. So who thinks this is a tall giant? Well, nobody does because we know that there is no such thing as tall giants. But it illustrates the point of perspective. We have a tall building at the back and we have a picture that looks as if we have a huge human holding it up. And we want to bring false perspective into our gardens. So here's a pathway. The end that's closest to the camera is wider than the part at the opposite end. By making this pathway slowly get narrower and narrower, we have the impression that this yard is very deep. Here's another great example, harder to put in your garden. But it looks like these steps are a long way off. But in fact, if you look at the paving stones, you see how they go up like this. What they've actually done is angled this part. And over here, they've angled it up this way. And as they go back, each one of these is smaller and smaller and smaller. It looks as if this is a huge structure, but in fact, it's actually a pretty small structure. Now you can do things in your garden fairly easily. Let's say you have two planters like this. Most people are going to get the same size pots, put in the same size evergreens, and that's okay. But if you have two lined up like this, and you take the one that's closest to your visitor and make it a bit bigger, so you big a bigger pot here and a smaller pot here, a bigger evergreen here and a smaller evergreen here, it'll make your yard look so much deeper. This is another example where you can trim the evergreens to give you that look of depth. So how do you make small yard feel bigger? I've mentioned several things already, but here's a couple other tricks. Put in false doors. Now I know this one's on a brick wall and it hasn't been cleaned up very well, but you can do the same thing on your standard wood fence. Put in a gate. It won't go anywhere. It doesn't even have to open. It just needs to look like a gate. And people will think your property is much bigger than it really is. Here's a fake window. So we've got this window and we put a mirror inside. Now you think there's something on the other side which makes this garden seem so much bigger. And you've got mystery on the other side of this window. And yet it's actually put onto a solid wall. Could be a shed could be one of those wood fences. This adds depth to the garden and makes it more interesting. 
side gardens. They're all tiny little things. And so what people do is they put in tiny plants. And when you put in tiny plants into a tiny garden, you end up with a garden that looks tiny. You have to put in big stuff and you have to go high. This isn't very wide here, but it's very interesting. It's got different types of floors, different pathways, but it goes up, gives you lots of things to look at. And now you have a space that actually looks much bigger than it really is. This is one of the perfect ways to enlarge your garden. Have a pathway that seems to go on forever. If you're standing here and looking at this, you're looking along this pathway, you don't know where the end of this garden is. The back fence is all covered in greenery. You can't see it. This could go on forever. By putting this kind of a pathway in and by putting in more vertical things like shrubs or, or wooden structures so you can't actually see the whole garden at once, you give the viewer the impression that this is a really large space. Or create a little garden like this that's tucked away behind a bunch of bushes. So when I started my garden here, the first thing I did is I went out and started collecting pictures of gardens that I liked or things that I liked. And then when it came time to actually finish the garden, to put things in, I look at that picture file. And I look at that picture file all the time. And I'm looking for ideas. Here's a picture. Now it's an okay backyard. What I really like here is the fact that they've put this deck right on the ground. And I could maybe use that in part of my garden. I also like these vertical trees here. See, they have an ugly fence too, but they put a few trees and evergreens in here. And that looks really nice. So what you do with this picture file is you take out ideas. You don't copy the whole picture, but you try to find something in here that you like, and then you use it. I'm not quite sure where I'd use this, but I think this is really kind of neat. Here's a little garden, and rather than putting up a fence, which would be very traditional, or an evergreen hedge, very traditional. They have this unique structure, which I've never seen before. Some big posts, some metal cross pieces. I don't really care for these wires going up and down, but my guess is these are clematis. And clematis will grow up here like crazy. So these will look great later in summer when they're covered in flowers. So you've got a trellis here that's much more interesting than the things most people use. Much more unusual, so I love that but maybe the rest of the garden I wouldn't use. Here's a picture. Okay, we use patio stones. Those are pretty common. This has a dry river bed running across it, which you don't see very often, but then they made this simple, simple bridge. Just some boards, but notice that the boards are cut into different shapes. Each one's a little different width. Each one's a little different length. They're not quite cut straight, so they're a little crooked. And suddenly you have this very interesting little structure in the garden that's really easy to build. Buy some wood, cut it up a little bit, lay it on the ground, and you're done. No concrete, no nails, no nothing. You've got yourself an interesting bridge. So I look at these pictures and I, what is in this picture I really like? And I might just steal this one piece and put it somewhere in my garden. And some more ugly fences. I'm not sure what they're really doing here. We've got a pathway going to the back corner and this doesn't really look like a gate so I'm a little confused here if this had been built like a gate where you actually had a handle and some hinges even if it never opened this would be great because then I think oh this guy's got a huge backyard I want to go see this his other garden and yet it's a dead end so that's a good idea I might use that one and one more little idea do something quirky in the garden. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be expensive. Here's a little statue and a little mirror. And you can put this just about in any garden and add interest. And when the person walks along here, get a little chuckle out of it. And they'll enjoy the garden so much more. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about garden design, click on the link in the top right hand corner of the screen. Have a great time with your next statue in the garden.